Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Julie Combs and I'll be moderating this event from sunny but unusually chilly Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, welcome to this week's edition of NCCE Live. Today our topic is using Google Slides for more than just presentations. Our presenters include Simon Miller, Shelley Emsley, and Deanna Horsons, who collectively have nearly 75 years of teaching experience. That's impressive. Simon is joining us from Kellogg, Idaho, where he is a technology director for his district. An interesting fact about Simon is that he is a self-taught drummer and he loves to spend extended periods of time talking about spreadsheets. Wink, wink. Shelley joins us from beautiful Big Fork, Montana, where she is a fifth grade teacher and technology specialist. Her first love is teaching, but if that ever changes, she'll be working for the FBI. Shelley, I'm sure there's a good story behind that and I want to hear it someday. And last but not least, we have Deanna Horsons from Florence, Montana. Deanna teaches third grade and is also a technology specialist. I'm really jealous of Deanna because she just came back to the States from a one year teaching assignment in New Zealand. Well, it looks like we're all ready to begin, so I'll ask all of our participants to help this session run smoothly, muting your microphone, turning off your webcam, and using the chat feature if you have questions. I'll monitor the questions and bring them to the presenter's attention throughout the event. So team, are you ready to go? All right, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Julie, thank you so much for the awesome introduction. I feel like uh, we have so much to live up to now. You did such a wonderful <laughs> job of bringing us in. Uh, welcome everybody and thanks for joining us here on Live from NCCE. Uh, I am actually at my office. I only have one sort of person on my side of the building, so I can I can distance quite well and my internet is much better here at work. So I came uh, in today to do this. I was going to do it from home, but the internet's not quite as good. Uh, we're super happy to be here. Uh, this We call this team uh, Mont Idaho, Montana and Idaho. For those of you that went to NCCE this year, if you were at the conference, uh, you will know that Deanna stepped in and presented with me on a full day session uh, because uh, Shelly was not able to attend due to our challenging events that we had uh, on the week of the conference. So we have all been collaborating in, in past endeavors. And so we thought it would be really fun and exciting to just share some uh, Google Slides. And it just is so much more than presentation. Nothing we're going to show you today except for our slide deck itself is used as a presentation. So we hope uh, you will enjoy Enjoy this, you are in for a treat. I am going to start off being right now the only one that's not in the classroom of the three of us. I'm going to share my screen, so hopefully that is coming up. If anybody could let me know that that is up, I'll make sure it looks like it is. So I have, from a technology director standpoint, I interface with teachers frequently. So I always learn from them and then also share with them. So I'm always kind of getting tricks and tips. So I don't use them with my kids every day because I don't have any classes currently, but I get to sort of uh, share all, all the time and kind of keep them in my memory bank. So that's what I'm going to do to start things off. I'm going to give some tips, my favorites. Uh, the first being um, when it comes to best practice and, and using a collaborative slide deck, unless you know you're going to co-present or co-teach with somebody, it's a good habit to get into to either go to file and make a copy. And so you can have your own and put it in your own Google Drive. So then whatever changes you make are yours and you're not modifying some of the, some work from someone else. But what I like to do if I'm actually collaborating is I like to make a shortcut to Drive. So this is actually already has a shortcut made, but I could go here and add a shortcut and put it in my drive. So it's kind of pretending to be there. And by doing that, I'm able to collaborate still with the other person, but then it, it's in a place that I recognize where it is. So th that's my first tip, it's like sort of um, slides etiquette. So know if you're supposed to modify it or not. And if you're not, make a copy for yourself and then modify. 
And that's probably applicable. And Deanna and Shelly will talk about that later with your kids. When you make a slide deck for them to use as a template, you may not want them to change yours. You may want them to make their own copy. So we'll, we'll kind of, those, those topics will kind of reemerge as we come through the slides and the, and the topics here. So the next one is um, I got to give a shout out to my tech savvy uh, teacher and Dr. Jason Neifer. Uh, who I've co-presented with a couple of times, and that is using a resource called Slides Carnival. And if you're not using Slides Carnival, you need to check it out because there's some really cool styles and design concepts, and it can kind of give you a little bit of a kickstart. If you're like me, sometimes a majority of our time we spend like, what color am, am I going to use and what layouts am I going to use? And these have enough templates and enough sort of default settings that it really kind of gets you going on, on, on the meat and potatoes of your presentation instead of sitting there going, oh, what blue do I use? What? So for me, um, this has been a very helpful kind of design. Uh, and it uses complementary colors and all those good design tools, so concepts. So the third one I have, that, and this is one of my favorites. I can't remember who showed me this, but right now you can see I'm just in my edit mode for my slides. And I can move around, and I can see what Shelly and Deanna have added for us. Oh, spoiler alert. I don't want to go forward too fast. Mm -hmm. um, but, but one of the things that I like to do when I was teaching was I liked, it, I liked the present, present mode. So if I did this. You know, that looks, it takes up my full screen, but then I'm kind of stuck in my presentation. And we're here to talk about this being much more than presentation. So here's a little trick I learned. If you look at the URL of the Google Doc uh, hash here, and you can see all those random letters and, and that's identifying the document. And then you can see a, a slash and then edit and then kind of the number of the slide and all that. You don't have to understand any of that. All you have to know what to do is, is after the last slash, if you highlight that last chunk and then just hit, you can either hit cut or you can just backspace it out and then carefully type preview. Yeah, then I mess it up, of course. Um, you'll notice that it's in presentation mode, but I also have access to all of my tabs still and I can come right back here to presentation mode and go to my slides. And visually, it just kind of gives it that uh, presentation-y feel, but it doesn't limit you. You don't have to kind of hit escape to get out of the presentation and then jump back in. It's kind of a, it's a hybrid, I call it, of um, being able to move around on, on, on the tabs of your browser or your desktop and have it look good at the same time. So that's my third tip using preview. My fourth tip, I'm going to jump back over to the traditional view here. Um, I just had another copy of it open just to um, transition a little bit easier. And I'm going to move to the next slide for this one. If you're using this already and if you are if you use it to sort of uh, use it for directions or have things where kids are supposed to read a prompt or something like that, you'll find that what's going to happen, kids are going to click on it and they're going to delete it and the next kid's going to say i can't see the directions anymore because johnny deleted it and then they say no i didn't well this is kind of a nice tip as well and i uh, learned this a um, couple of youtube videos i was learning how to ma edit master slides and i think either deanna and or shannon or uh, shelly are going to put the link in the chat to the YouTube video that I used for this. this. This presenter did a fantastic job of teaching this, but I'm just gonna show you one example. So to edit a master slide and kind of give it, make it a tricky bulletproof uh, concept for kids, you'll notice I'm clicking over here on these elements and I can't change them. So there's actually two ways to do this and Deanna has, has a method too, but I'm going to show you, I'm gonna be on this slide and I'm gonna go up to slide and edit master. What happens there is I get sort of the style uh, framework for this entire slide deck, including different types of slides. So it's what you get. I'm going to get out of here really quick and show you to kind of tie it together. It's what you get when you hit the new slide and the, so the, with the different formats. So what you're able to do is you're able to design and change these if you want to. But I'm just going to show you one trick because we could do this for an hour. Um, so I'm going to go to slide, edit, master. And I'm going to go down here to the end, and I'm just going to make a copy of this slide right here. I'm just going to copy, paste, control C, control V, and I'm going to leave that text field in there. I'm going to bring over 
a, a image and I, I'm going to just go grab it from Snagit and that's in the video. So I'm not going to get into too much of it here, but I'm going to paste it in here. So basically what I did was I took a picture, I took a screenshot of the slide and now I'm making it into a master slide. And it, since it's the same color, I don't have to match it up too well. And I'm just going to kind of call it good there. I can rename it um, directions for students. And when I click OK there and close this with the X, this is a little misleading. You don't have to click Save anywhere. You just have to close it. Now, when I come up here to add my slides, you'll see that it's down here at the end. I made two because I did this before. But now when I add that slide, and that's what this one is, they can't click around and delete things. And then they can also click in the text box. Now, a lot of people might go, well, I don't do that too often, but I do like kids to type and give input. So the next example that Deanna provided, and she's going to talk a little bit about it when, when we transition to her, is making a slide template such as this, where I can click in these text boxes and type, but I can't change the pictures and the words that she already has in there. So when you're having your kids do the activity, whether it's a Freyer model or whether it's a, a sort of writing and typing activity like this, like a story, the, the different elements of a story, like the kids can get in and get it messy, but then they don't uh, dis disturb everything else. That leads me to my last tip. I'll go back here to the slide one more time. I want to give a shout out to um, John Carippo, the author of Iron Chef, or I mean, um, Edge of Protocols. And one of the frames, teacher frameworks in there is called the Iron Chef. And that one's near and dear to my heart because when I was at the Google Teacher Academy in 2014, um, I, this was one of the activities they did with us, and it stuck with me. It, it was so much fun to do. Now, if you've watched Iron Chef, you get a bunch of ingredients that have already been kind of picked for you, and then you have a time limit, and you have to cook something. You have to prepare something, and then you get judged by it. So what what's so great about this activity is, and I, we're going to provide links in the chat, wonderful books. I did not write these books. I'm not plugging anything for me. I don't get anything from them. I just have the book itself here in my office, and I share it with my teachers frequently. Um, so basically, you're giving your kids a high, kind of not high pressure, um, high energy and a timed environment to make really precise, meaningful slides and with a, with a time limit. So they really get to work and they really just collaborate together. And Google Slides is really, really, really good at collaboration. So um, check that out. I uh, That would be another hour session right there, just going into the Iron Chef activity. But uh, we've provided some links so you can go do some of the research on your own. And uh, those are my favorites. So with uh, with those, I'm going to kick it down to Florence, Montana, and see what Deanna has for us. Thanks, Simon. I have just a couple really quick tips and just a shortcut on this. Simon did share it. Uh, I actually, if you do make the master slide, which is awesome, you can reuse that over and over. This one I just did as a shortcut. I made the slide, I downloaded and saved it as a JPEG, uploaded it and turned it into the background. And then the students were able to click inside of that. So that's another, and they, this was for third graders. So obviously we didn't want them writing on everything. So we're removing things. Um, they're notorious for messing stuff up if they don't know what they're doing. So my really quick, tip is a workaround. Uh, a lot of lots of schools are now using Google Classroom and we use it through our whole K-12 and we're having a lot of success. But in the elementary grades, students are on Chromebooks. High school and middle schoolers have a lot of mobile devices and they can take pictures with their camera on their phone. And you can actually attach a photograph in Google Classroom if you're on a mobile device. If you're not on a mobile device and you're like on a Chromebook, um, it's a lot more difficult to get an image into Google Classroom. So I have a couple examples here. This is a first grade example where the student did their work and the teacher wanted them to attach a photograph. So what we do is we create a template and then we have the students use slides to give us their photographs back. And I can show you how to do that. We have here a little scavenger hunt in fifth grade. In PE, our third graders had to create a um, 
obstacle course and share with their PE teacher what their obstacle course was. Here's an assignment where they needed to do a drawing because we're still doing a lot of hands-on with our digital technology. Hey, and so Deanna, they need, yeah. this assignment, um, did you share your screen with us? Yeah, I or did. Is it not sharing? Maybe represent. Just I've seen some uh, comments in the chat that they're not seeing your screen. So it just says maybe I'm try sharing. To, maybe try to Hold unshare on, and reshare. Again. Yeah, let's see if we can get that cranked up. I wonder if it's because I'm in the web app and not the, Okay, now we are now? seeing. Yep, yep. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, dear. you're good. You're good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, All right, thank I'll you go chat. back. Okay, awesome. thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, this is what I was just talking about. I won't go over it again for you. Um, basically, the first grade, fifth grade, our elementary students need to either do artwork and share it or do an activity and share a photograph of it. It's really hard on a Chromebook to share an image if you don't have that mobile device. So what we've done for the students is we've created a template and they turn it, just give them a blank slide. And then the second slide has the directions. I'll share that with you in just a moment. Um, but uh, what we have them do is we have them open the slide that we've given them in Google Classroom. And all they need to do, I'm going to jump out here in a second. Where's my... Uh, okay, that didn't work. Is this it? Okay, yes. I'm gonna do this inside of Google Slides. So we just have the students follow the directions. They go to insert, image, choose camera, and then they take a picture with the camera of whatever they have to share. They go ahead and choose it, insert it. It pops it right into the slide for them. They can change the size. That's a really good picture. And that is how we have them share a image with us in Google Classroom. So slides is also a vessel for getting things to us that are otherwise quite difficult. So uh, I did share, I think Simon probably shared in the chat, the directions to this and uh, a short video explaining how to do that. So next, Shelly has some great ideas about using audio in Google Slides. Hi guys. Okay. Uh, give me a thumbs up in the chat or somewhere if you can, um, or let me know if you can see my screen. Uh, we can hear it and see your screen. Woohoo! You're ready. Okay. Good job. All right. Um, first, I want to thank Simon and Deanna because I literally learned from them um, <laughs> today as well, especially this um, preview mode, which I had um, no idea about until uh, Simon showed me, which was really amazing. And um, allowed me to uh, try something new. So we're all learning together in this. And I want to thank NCCE for having uh, and being innovative in this time of craziness and having this type of professional development because it's really um, a neat opportunity. And I'm going to talk about audio in uh, slides. I use an online voice recorder um, and it's a really incredible tool because it lets kids express their learning and you get to hear their voice, but you could also add your voice to um, newsletters or um, you know how sometimes you say something in class and then by the time it gets home, it gets lost in translation. So we just wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page and getting the information. There's also um, an online um, voice changer, which takes you down a different rabbit hole. Um, and I won't go there right now, but it's super fun. I also made a video in this um, for you and Deanna and Simon will put it in the chat. So it's a little tutorial on how to make it. Um, the best thing I can say is make sure in your drive, because it saves right to your drive, that you have the share settings correctly or you will have um, 23 kids telling you you cannot, um, they can't hear the sound. So I also do audio in a fun way and um, it's hard being in this emergency remote learning situation. So uh, I did sounds around the classroom and then I made a Google form. So just an example, I'll play sound three. All right, and then they would have to go to this Google form 
and fill out their name and then their answers. So it's really one great way to, um, you know, hear those familiar sounds. This was a funny one. That is actually the Purell dispenser in our classroom. Um, I've had some kids answer that the first sound they thought was a snake, and I told them, no, it has to be in the classroom. Um, Deanna also did one where they had to find a sound from home, um, and they had to guess. So it's really a great tool. And again, everything is in my tutorial video, so um, you can learn how to do it there. Now, this is where I want you to understand that slides is so much more than just a slide, like a presentation mode. And um, Deanna is actually responsible for this because about four years ago, she taught me file page setup and it has changed my life. And it's as simple as file page setup going to um, the custom. And my go to is eight and a half by 11 or 11 and by eight and a half. And I want to show you some different ways. So this is a newsletter that I send out to um, my parents via Remind so they get to see it in color. And of course, if you have those parents that don't, you know, have digital access, you can, um, you are able to print these. It's just black and white. Um, but I really try to uh, keep it simple and use two different fonts for each um, newsletter. And don't just think of, and this is a really simple one. This is just a one pager. Uh, I'm going very fast through these, I know, but I have made it a video for you guys, which they will post in there on how to do these. And I like making a weekly planner um, and it's just text boxes. And you'll notice I have a big space here on the left and that's so I can bind these if needed um, and a to-do list. And if you have the kids make these, they're totally invested. And if you have them pick their icons and their color scheme, um, they're more willing to fill it out. It's amazing. Uh, flyers, I just did, we just did a Cinco de Mayo parade for uh, our entire students to drive by and wave to us because we miss them so much. Um, and in the video back here, I show you how to make um, this background and um, it may seem overwhelming at first glance, but I kind of take you through the process of how to do that. Then uh, infographic, I say ish, because this isn't like a lot of statistics and data, but um, when we switched to emergency remote learning, I had to, you know, we did it in a weekend, like it was crazy. So my kids at home didn't know about how to learn at home. And so for the younger kids, we did something super simple. And for the older kids, we did a little, you know, more in depth. Um, but notice it's really the same format. So if you have, we're a K-8 school, so we have kids in the lower grades and siblings in the upper grades. So we tried to keep it somewhat the same in the same language, but parents could identify. Um, and then, the ISTE standards, NCCE offers um, ISTE certification, and this is just kind of a jump start on it. So here are the student standards and then the teacher standards, um, and this will also be in the chat. So file, make a copy, enjoy. Um, that's what I love about this is when people create, um, we share and everybody benefits from it. And am I going too fast or are we good? <laughs> I think you're doing great. I'm watching the chat, Shelly. Just keep bringing it. It's good stuff. We're okay. just you're you're wowing us. That's okay. <laughs> so so keep yeah. Going. Go ahead and talk about our must-haves. I'm going to throw those in there. Okay. Um, let me do one more remote remote oh. learning real quickly. Um, so remote learning for uh, my fifth graders, I use slides for everything, and this is our workflow. Um, I post this on Google Classroom, but we literally work from here and they turn in everything um, on via this slide deck. So you'll notice, you'll see the little audio right here and I have, happy Cinco de Mayo. This is week six, <laughs> five, four. To and that was my son in the background. Um, it's a family affair. So I have uh, a, the slide deck for the week. I give them an overview. So I put an entire Screencastify video in here and it plays right within the um, Morning. Look. slide deck. It was May the 4th be with you. Sorry, little, little geeky here. Um, so I go through the slide deck with them and then I give them their schedule. 
I give them tutorials. Uh, this was Mama Monday, and we have different activities um, on the day. Now, this is that online. I said I wasn't going to go there, but I'm going to go there. Um, Good morning. Happy May the 4th be with you. So that's the online voice changer, which um, you can just have a lot of fun with this. Uh, so I give the kids their entire work and um, audio instructions on how to do something. I give them resources within um, and you insert the videos. They don't have to go to YouTube. Everything is right there for them. Uh, we've even, um, we're doing a talkie Tuesday or we did cause this was this week and we did a Google map. Um, and we started kind of doing an ancestry.com of where we're talking to our relatives in the world. And right now I actually have a student in Japan, um, who's stuck there and can't get home yet. So he, it's been great because he's been able to do everything, um, that the class has done via classroom and slides and then they insert pictures and they talk about where they are we had a very nice privacy lesson on not to um you know post somebody's exact address and their name um first and last so it was really kind of good and then i found out that like i have kids this is me uh, my family's in encinitas or that was another family um how many of us have relatives in the same places and um some people only had relatives in montana so it was just a super fun way to uh do the remote learning that was a lot, and I'm sorry, because um, I could go on and on in that uh, one slide deck, but I won't. Uh, then we have my must-haves. Um, in order to make these presentations and um, the different uh, formats that I use and colors, I use an extension called Color Pick Eyedropper uh, that is key. And you'll notice NCCE Live Events, I wanted to kind of match their color scheme, so I went and took the color from their website and um, also it's a very good resource to have in your bag so put that on your bookmarks um, and this video right here they'll put in the chat that shows you how to go through how to grab um, the color and how to change it then the add-on which is um, inside your slides you have um, add-ons and i teach you how to do that um, and this is called flat icon, not flat icon. Sorry, my kids, my students are like, um, Mrs. Emsley, you're pronouncing that incorrectly. So, and it comes on your add-ons within slides and um, you can make really cool graphics. That's how I made all the infographics and it shows you how to change the color, then page setup, of course, and get creative. You can download, um, you can do five by seven and have them printed at Walmart or a four by six for 19 cents. And you could do, you know, inspirational messages to your students. I mean, it's just endless. And I could talk, like Simon said, for hours and hours on this. Um, my other biggest one is um, Canva color combinations. Like people, it's out there for you. You do not have to reinvent the wheel. So you just simply go to Canva, you get the color scheme that you like. And I walk you through this on the video on how to do it. And of course, it's going to slow, but it gives you the color um, scheme and it gives you the color code and you simply just copy and paste it into custom colors and not that google doesn't have an array of beautiful colors um but sometimes you want to go a little um different and you know just kick it up just a notch so that is literally me in a nutshell um simon i will send it back to you Shelly, you just gave us a graphic arts um, lesson in 13 minutes. I'm in I, I'm, I'm in awe right now, I and know. I have known you. So if you guys, like, I'll show my camera now, because if you guys could see how excited I get over color theory and design elements, um, and just watch the videos, because the videos, like, maybe I'm chilled down, like, 10 degrees, um, and I really tried to talk slowly and walk you through it, but... I just get super excited with design. It shows and it's contagious. We're all, the chat is excited. The chat's just hopping and people are copying and pasting and making copies of and installing extensions and uh, just 
it's been it's awesome. It's so fun to work with you guys, all of you, and especially Shelly, you and Deanna. It's been we've had a fun couple of weeks yeah. as we're remote learning. We've just been doing hangouts and teams, and that's the fun part, collaborating with awesome educators, and that's really the heart of NCCE. So um, do we have maybe any questions or Deanna, do you have anything else to add? I don't think so. How can I follow that? <laughs> <laughs> it's well, team, I've been watching the uh, the chat, and I don't see any questions, but there are lots and lots of love emojis and uh, some some pretty awesome comments in there. My brain's going to explode. I'm going to be on yeah. the computer playing with all these tools and making master slides. Man, that master slides is it's going to change my world. Uh, that was awesome. So um, if you guys don't have anything else to add, I'm going to uh, go ahead and plug for the next week. Are y'all ready? Thank you so much. This was absolutely amazing. You did a fabulous job, which we all knew you would. 